Joe. Joe, we're ready to start the meeting. Joe. Joe Cronin. Let's go. I'd like to welcome everybody to the St. Charles County Council meeting of July 8th, 2019. The invocation will be led by Councilman Mike Elam, and the pledge will be led by Councilman Mike Klinghammer. So the mics. Okay. Let's pray. Father God, we just come before you tonight and thanking you for the experience that we've had over this past week in celebrating the freedoms of our country. We thank you for those who pay the ultimate price to give us those freedoms, and I just pray that we'll continue to recognize their sacrifice and dedication that they continue to do. We thank you for this meeting that we have tonight, and we lift it up to your wisdom, and we ask that you'll be with us as we go about these deliberations. As always, we ask this in your name. Amen. 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 I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. So I have to have roll call. Councilmember Joe Cronin. Here. Councilmember Joe Brassel. Here. Councilmember Mike Elam. Here. Councilmember John White. Here. Councilmember Dave Hammond. Here. Councilmember Terry Hollander. Here. Councilmember Mike Klinghammer. Here. Next on our agenda <laughs> is uh, conditional use permits, and we have one bill that's been tabled and needs to be taken off the table. I'd like to make a motion to remove <laughs> Bill 4730 from the table. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those that oppose? Motion carries, 4730 is off the table for discussion. And now I'll read the title. Uh, bill number 4730, an ordinance granting conditional use permits CUR 19-03B for landscaping contracting services to Hillman Bryan Road LLC property <coughs> owner and KF Landscapes LLC applicant. Discussion? <coughs> no. And Exhibit C has been received Oh uh, yes, uh, Exhibit C has been received and the bill is ready for final passage. So, Donna, call the roll. For Bill Number 4730, an ordinance granting conditional use permit CUR 19-03B for landscaping contracting services to Hillman Bryan Road LLC property owner and KF Landscapes LLC applicant. Councilmember Cronin. Yes. Councilmember Brazel. Yes. Councilmember Elam. Yes. Councilmember White. Yes. Councilmember Hammond. Yes. Councilmember Hollander. Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer. Yes. Bill 4730 is passed. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to uh, go ahead and move down to table bills, uh, specifically 4731, which has to do with zoning for the same property, and ask that that be removed from the table and moved up to uh, next on the agenda. Second. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Those that oppose? Motion carries. Now I'll read the title, Bill Number 4731, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R3A, medium density residential district, to C2, general commercial district, as per application CUR 19-03A. Any questions or comments? Seeing none. An ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R3A medium density residential district to C2 general commercial district as per application CUR 19-03A. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Bill number 4731 has passed. 
And we move on to public comments. This is a time where anybody can for come forward to the council and speak on any topic, but once a topic has been uh, arrived at, we ask that there be three speakers pro and three speakers con, and we ask that you please limit your time to three minutes. Are there any speakers? Arnie Dinoff. Thank you very much, members of the County Council. My name is Arnie C. A.C. Dinoff, political advocate and uh, uh, citizen. Um, first of all, on your agenda is a confirmation of Matthew Seeds as the uh, IT Director, Information Systems. My question is to the council is, is he the right fit for us? With less than six years experience with the city of St. Charles, which is a different beast from our county, really makes me question, is he the right fit for our county government? As we all know, IT has gone through two directors in the last couple of years, and we have some severe problems in the information technologies department. That salary is $225,000 to $275,000 salary, the highest position in county government with pension benefits. Um, like I said, the city and county are two different beasts, and I don't know if he has the experience from 2012 to lead this large department. Mr. Seeds was a political operative. He was the treasurer and chair of several political action committees known as PACs. Is this a political payback to political operatives in St. Charles County? Mr. Seeds was part of political action committees that did dirty pot shots, political dirty laundry, through their illegal laundry political action committees known as PACs. I want to put a stern uh, uh, crossbow across the bow that Politics, use of county monies for political gain and benefit will not be tolerated. It's highly unethical and very illegal according to our Constitution. There will be no use of time, resources, or money of the county for political purposes like what was, what was used in the mayor's office in the city of St. Charles. And I ask again to the council, is this the right fit for our IT department with such an absorbent salary, benefits, and pension? On your agenda is uh, the police department, a portable remote trailer for $81,500. Do we really need this luxury and this toy to be put on top of a trailer uh, is my question. Also on the agenda, and I didn't make the public hearing at the last meeting, bill number 4740, as I was opposed at the Planning and Zoning Commission, I'm admirably opposed to 1936 Dwello Road for density issues. They proposed to put five unit homes there's setback issues, buffer issues, landscape issues, roadway issues, and public safety access with proper turning radius of, of uh, public safety apparatus for the fire district and ambulance districts. I ask that you vote this down. The highest and maximum use of that property is four dwellings, not the five that was discussed at planning and zoning. Um, and those are my comments for this evening. Thank you. Are there any other speakers? There are no. Very good. Speakers. Thank you. Moving on to the county executive for his comments. Any comments? Uh, none this evening, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Thank you, sir. Next is the uh, consent agenda. Is there a motion to accept? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Consent agenda is passed. Next, we move on to. Bills for introduction. Actually, we have one bill for final passage, oh, 4737. Yeah. Bill number 4737 for final passage. 4737, an ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute amendment number two to program services contract DH1800080005 with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for violent death and enhanced opioid surveillance reimbursement. Any questions or comments? Saying none, read the title and call the roll. An ordinance authorizing the county executive or his designee to execute amendment number 02 to program services contract DH1800080005 with the Missouri Department of Health and Senior Services for violent death and enhanced opioid surveillance reimbursement. Councilmember Elam? Yes. Councilmember White? Yes. Councilmember Hammond? Yes. Councilmember Hollander? Yes. Councilmember Klinghammer? Yes. Councilmember Cronin? Yes. Councilmember Brazel? Yes. 
Bill number 4737 is passed, so now we move on to bills for introduction, beginning with Bill 4740. Bill number 4740, requested by Michael Hurlbert, sponsored by Jill Brazel, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from A, Agricultural District, to R2, Two-Family Residential District, as per application RZ19-05. Any questions or comments on 4740? Um, from what I understand, uh, I read the comments, um, they're building, it's not designated how many, uh, four to five townhomes, so to speak, um, it's in a it's in a subdivision with small lots. I, I don't think it's a bad zoning option with the property that they that's left. It's a long it's a thin if you looked at the drawing it's a long thin narrow spot. So it's got uh, smaller single family homes in the area, but it's got the school next to it and everything else. So I don't I okay. haven't had anybody express any concerns on it. All right. Then we move on to bill number 4741. Bill number 4741, requested by Michael Hurlbert, sponsored by Mike Elam, an ordinance amending the zoning district map of the County of St. Charles, Missouri by rezoning land from R1A, single family residential district, to R1C, single family residential district, as per application RZ19-06. Any questions or comments on bill number 4741? Seeing none, we'll move on to bill 4742. Bill number 4742, requested by Craig Tykowski, sponsored by Council as a Whole, an ordinance authorizing the county executive to execute the Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality CMAQ agreement with the Missouri Highways and Transportation Commission to grant the use of funds to add ramps between Mo Missouri 364 West and Heritage Crossing Federal Project CMAQ-7302679 for the reimbursement of up to 50% of the eligible costs not to exceed a maximum of $1,404,000. This is in my district. It's something that a lot of people will, will be able to access their neighborhood much, much easily and for emergencies and for just anything. So this is a, a really good step that we need to take that wasn't able to, we weren't able to fund it in the very beginning, but now we are. So I ask you to please support this. Mr. Chairman. Yes. Thank you for saying that. I was going to just tell everybody, if anybody's against this, they're going to have to answer to you. <laughs> That's true. Because <laughs> you've worked a long time trying to get this. Too many years on and this. thank you. So, and too many people asking me about it. So, Okay, moving on to Bill 4743. Bill number 4743, requested by Hope Woodson and Mike Hurlbert, sponsored by John White, an ordinance creating a new Chapter 277 medical marijuana regulations in the Ordinances of St. Charles County, Missouri, OSCCMO, and amending certain sections of Chapter 405, OSCCMO, Unified Development Ordinance of St. Charles County, Missouri, zoning regulations in order to establish medical marijuana land use and safety regulations. There's probably no questions or comments on this one, so we'll move right on to 4744. <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> questions or comments? <clears throat> If we want to make, I don't know how tight the county legal staff is under the gun, if we want to make amendments to this and get it passed next meeting, or we have more time than that, okay? In other words, if you want to, if you want to pass this in the next meeting, is the time to make a suggested amendment now or at the next meeting? I think that the if we're going to pass at the next meeting, we can either entertain amendments now or any time over the next, you know, seven days, something like that. I think your initial question, though, was when do you need to have it passed by? Yeah. When's the first meeting in August? I, we take applications on the third, so we had enough time on the idea of being passed in the next meeting, which would be the 29th. Yeah. One, one of the things for them to be able to incorporate the our, uh, our zoning, among other things, into their application on the August 3rd deadline. Uh, if we had it finalized by the next meeting, they could they could incorporate it then. Okay, because this is a zoning section, Mike's uh, ordinance with um, uh, substitutions wouldn't be, wouldn't be in effect. It would be. Can it, I can I guess your amendment? <laughs> Agricultural my, zoning with a CUP and fifteen hundred foot. Fifteen hundred. Whatever. I'm, 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 I'm quite, I can go. Well, there, so why not just go 1500? Let, let so me suggest 1500 distance from residential it, if, if it needs a CUP, um, 
still have. You know, the, the distance, I think, becomes less important, right? Because we, we have to approve, right? Yeah, but I just, the only reason I would want to have some kind of footage declared so that people want to spend a lot of money on engineering and going through the process, like if it's 300 feet, and there's two of us that are going to be opposed to that, maybe more. So establish some kind of ground rules. Okay. Yeah. 1,500 feet would probably be fine. 1,500 feet, so something that's used in elsewhere for by weather and municipal law. So if we did 1,500 feet, since O'Fallon's using 1,500 foot, one of the distances, and we use a CUP and agricultural, no different we do for a wedding venue, I would be fine with that. So whenever you want to include that as a substitution to facilitate passing your bill in a timely manner, that's up to the county councilor. The councilor's office can have that drafted, and as long as it's still distributed by Thursday at 8 a.m., um, you'll be covered by means of the Klinghammer Amendment. So. Oh, okay. <laughs> and then I, I would, the other Is this for cultivation? Yeah, yeah just yeah, for yeah, growing. Just for yeah. cultivation. And then if, if the council would agree, I would take whoever's ordinances get the most, the, the best definition of farthest distance from churches, schools, and whatever, I would go with that. That's what, how I would see it. I mean, you guys can. As far as dispensaries? Yeah. Just because when it changes to recreational. Well, let's just tell them what I, we I want to do instead of saying, let, I, saying the best. I mean, that's kind of a nebulous. Let's just flip to that page. Not, yeah, put it up there. And I think he's looking for most restrictive. Yes, I didn't want to say that. <laughs> well, I, but, I don't yeah. know why we put all these restrictions on a dispensary. When if you look at the people that are coming there, I don't, I don't see that that is uh, any different than anybody going to it. A pharmacy anywhere. I, I would agree with you, but then I just know they're going to change it to recreational, and then that's when it, I think it yeah. might become a problem. But, well, yeah, Holly, not asking you to overstep and look at the future, but my guess is once, if, if that does happen, <laughs> on the off shot that it might, uh, that's going to have to go back through, and we're going to have to redo this process all over again. Is that fair to say? Each of these facilities are just for the medical marijuana cultivation facility, dispensary facility, all of that. So if they were there were to be a switch for recreational, I would foresee that you all would absolutely have another bite at that apple to have an opportunity to change those regulations if it's no longer just medical marijuana dispensary, mm -hmm. cultivation, testing, any of those facilities. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so to Dave's point, this really, from a dispensary standpoint, it's not really going to be any different than someone going to a pharmacy, so to say, because they're going to have to be going in and doing that. They can't smoke it in public, so it's not like you can get it, walk outside, and fire up right there, so to speak. Um, but yeah, so I really don't think you need to get ahead of, of this reason, one. The only reason to say that is because we're going to sit here and approve people that spend two, three hundred, four, five hundred thousand hours building a building, whatever, and doing the medical marijuana, and then they're going to reapply. And are we going to put them and say, no, you can't do it there? Now you'll have to move your building. And and it and it, it we always, may very well do that. Well, I'm just telling you, it's going to be harder. And I just have I have flashbacks oh. at a bait shop selling K2 <laughs> down by Francis Howe, which we stopped that and so it'll be similar if we don't put distances from schools and that's all I'm saying. We well, are we going to put the noise ordinance in there as well for the CV? You just kidding. There's 750 feet in it right now, right? Yes. Yes. So it's, it's got to be 750 feet away from churches, school, residential zone areas and homes. Is so this is on page 31 of the bill. Well, no one has, which one has 1500? That's right. some of the cities. That's what I'm saying. Go 1,500 with the cities. Go with the dispensaries. 1,500. Most of the cities look like Holly. They're 1,000 foot or better, right? And 1,000 is what the state said is its default. So unless a local government enacts something different, then 1,000 would be the default. On page 31 of the bill that's before you, there's no distinction between the five types of facilities, and it just says that all of those have to be at least 750 feet from churches and religious buildings. Uh, schools and daycares, educational type facilities, any residential zoning district, the property line of a lot devoted to a residential use, any public park, and a facility can't be operated within a building or structure that contains a residential unit. Holly, was there any magic to the 750 or was that just something you you guys felt you need to put something on the billboard on the blackboard for us to shoot at? I mean. I don't recall specifically whether that was something recommended by community development or if it was a number that was chosen. Um, I, my general recollection is that it was just sort of within the realm of what other folks were doing. Okay. I, for consistency, 
most of the of the municipalities are out in front of us. I mean, I, I I applaud them to some degree that they got on their game quicker than we did. But it's a thousand feet seems to be the the, the standard. Um, I would say we should just do the same thing. Okay. Yep, I agree. What is it for liquor? That I don't so, know. Current. Robert, do you know that? I I like the thousand. It's only like feet. I like the, the thousands simply because that's what Winsville is. And if we have something less than Winsville, there's pockets of county all around Winsville. So we can have a pocket of county yeah. and yeah. Winsville can come back and say, well, we're a thousand. Why are you guys only 750? So I, I like that idea. I like the thousand foot. Be consistent with the cities in the county. It's got a lot of problems. Yeah. And I'm sorry, is that in addition to or instead of the 1500 CUP for no, the that's, that's in cultivation? To. Okay. Bill number 4744, requested by Hope Woodson, sponsored by John White, an ordinance amending sections 230.010 and 230.030, ordinances of St. Charles County, <coughs> Missouri, OSCCMO. Relating to food code fees and for permits and inspections. Questions or comments? I have a question. Yes. Hope, is it, explain this, is, is this uh, on farmers markets or tell me exactly what this is doing? So if you got the attachment that I sent, the summary, yeah. that kind of outlines what our current permit fees are, what our actual costs are, and then our proposed fees. And you can see um, underneath the first block, there's an asterisk. And so for the farmer's market, currently they're applying for multiple fees throughout the year for temporary permits. This would give them the opportunity to just do one permit and not put them through the multiple permits and actually it'll end up being cheaper for them in the long run. Like a mobile permit, so to speak? In, in lieu of, it would be one long mobile permit. But this doesn't have anything to do with like vegetable stands, farm, some farm or put up on the It would farm. be the more the farmer's markets that, that are already covered in that now. So right now, this covers uh, five. Okay. Sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> Anything well, else? I mean, currently, if, if if the way I understand it, if you if you grow the food on your own ground and you put a trailer out there and sell tomatoes and cucumbers, that right? wouldn't cover this. Yeah. No. Okay. What about if you grow marijuana on your farmer's market? <laughs> well, now you can do that, too, I guess. Well, hopefully you don't eat the plant. You don't sell it to stand. We will on that. You'd have to be 1,000 feet away. <laughs> Anything else, gentlemen? Joe? Mm -mm. No? No, I'm good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, I, I do want to say to the council that if you have anything at all you want to say to her, this is probably your last chance because a week from today is your last day. I started to say, I, I think Mr. Brazel just wanted you to come back up here <laughs> so you could have one last chance to talk before you ride off into the sunset, literally. Right. Literally in the sunset, the sunrise. but yeah. Okay. Sunrise. <laughs> Thanks. Sunshine State. Thanks yeah. for all your efforts through the years. Thank you. Yes. It's, yeah. it's been an absolute pleasure to work for the county, and yeah. um, my loyal, loyalty and heart will always remain with you all. And I'll still watch and tune in from time to time because I just can't help myself. So. You, need to break, you need to break yourself of that habit. <laughs> <laughs> well, that might take a while, but um, she might be on the beach while she's doing it. But you know, I, I could be doing that. But um, thank you <laughs> for this opportunity. It's been a wonderful yeah. ride. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you and good luck to you. Yes. Next we have the next last bill is 4745. Bill number 4745 requested by Dave Todd, sponsored by John White, an ordinance amending the 2019 budget for positions within the St. Charles County Police Department Bureau of Administrative Services to add a school resource officer for a new school in the Francis House School District. Any questions or comments? What's the new school? It's K-12. It's, um, I'm not sure yet. Okay. But it's the alternative school, so. All right. It's for special needs children uh -huh. uh, with emotional uh, disabilities and opposition disorder. Very good. All right. 
All right, next, that's the last bill for introduction and we'll move on to announcements and miscellaneous. Well, I have an announcement and a miscellaneous. Okay. So we've, we've already kind of done one. So this meeting is kind of unique in that we say goodbye to one very popular and outstanding county employee who we are gonna miss very much. But we welcome a brand new uh, IT director in Matthew Seeds and we kind of rolled through the consent agenda. So Matthew, congratulations. Welcome to county government. Uh, if you wanna know the real story, you can talk to Hope before she gets out of here. <laughs> so congratulations. Nope. No, Motion to adjourn. So Motion. moved. We're adjourned. Um, I need to make a comment. If they want